Now we are doing the AMC 10A from 2022 problem 16 and the 12A problem 15. This problem's got a couple different ways to do it. It's got more than that probably. Uh, there is a function way that you can utilize. It's not what I did when I was doing it on my own solution of the test. I'm gonna show you my solution and then talk about another way that you could do it, which is probably faster. Um, first, it is Vietas is the way that I did it. And so uh, let's get started here. The roots of the polynomial. When they talk about roots, what are roots? Roots, solutions, x-intercepts, zeros. All essentially mean the same thing. By zeros, it's going to be this expression equal to zero. And then it's going to be an x-intercept because essentially you have an equation, y equals like that. And you're making y zero, which is why they're called zeros. And so here we go. We got roots of this equation. They are the height, length, and width of a rectangular box, which is a right rectangular prism. Um, something else kind of neat. I don't know what class it was that I was teaching, but there was a problem that came up and we had actually designed in the class a problem that did the same mechanism. Basically used a cubic polynomial to create the roots of it were the dimensions of this. And I forget what I came up with. I think I, it's recorded somewhere, I gotta find it. But it's kind of neat to see the same exact idea appear on the test. I didn't think it had appeared up to this point, but maybe they're listening to my classes, I don't know. So here we go. A new rectangular box is formed by lengthening each edge of the original box by two units. What is the volume of the new box? So first, uh, this is like A, B, C, and D. So I'm gonna use the letters E, F, and G to avoid confusion. Um, we know that the product of E, F, and G, these are the roots, okay? If you don't know what I'm doing, those are the roots. So the product of those roots uh, is going to be the negative constant over the leading coefficient. Uh, that product of roots alternates signs. So when it's a, a quadratic, for instance, ax squared plus bx plus c, it is positive c over a. And the sum of the roots is negative b over a. Okay, But as we move to cubics, it's going to still stay negative second coefficient over leading coefficient for the sum. So for instance, we know that E plus F plus G is equal to 39 over 10 because that's the negative second over first, which is how you want to memorize it. Don't memorize the letters because if they switch the letters on, you're going to get confused. All right, the next one is the pairwise products. Pairwise products is what it sounds like. We're taking these and we're making them into pairs. That would be E with F, E with G, and F with G. And so we're going to get uh, E, F, plus FG plus EG, for example. All right, that's a pun. Anyhow, uh, this is going to equal 29 over 10, and it's the positive 29 over 10. So the way it's gonna work, it's gonna alternate signs. The sum is always negative second coefficient over leading coefficient. But the next one on the list when you're doing this, as you go up in polynomials, is going to be uh, now a positive uh, you know, third coefficient over leading co coefficient. And then the, the all three of them multiplied together, E times F times G. Notice what we're doing. We're pairing them in, or putting them in groups of one, groups of two, and now groups of three. And there's only one group of three when there's three things. And so E times F times G is going to equal six over 10. Okay, so these are our pieces. Now what? Well, we want the volume of a new box. If the, the roots are all going to be lengthened by two, we're gonna multiply E plus two times F plus two times G plus two. And now you're going to distribute this. I'm just gonna do it in a normal way. E plus two times F plus two will give me E F plus two E plus two F plus four. I'm gonna put G plus two in front. I'm gonna distribute the G. You get E times F times G plus two E G plus two F G plus four G. And then now you're gonna distribute the two. You're gonna get two E F. I'm gonna write it right here. Two times two E is plus four E. Two times two F 
is plus 4f. And finally, the 2 to the 4 makes 8. So now what do we have? This is the new volume. It's the new volume right there because the volume is length times width times height. So now what do we do? EFG is 6 over 10. Then this 2 EG, FG, and EF is 2 times the pairwise product. So you're going to get 58 over 10. Then you're going to have 4G, 4E, and 4F. That's 4 times G plus E plus F. 4 times 39 is 78 times 2 is 156 over 10. Next, we're going to add 8, but we're going to write it as 80 over 10. So now we're going to add this all up. There's 214 plus 6 is 220 plus 80 is 300. 300 over 10. Answer 30. Now, there is another way to do this. I just didn't feel comfortable with it, though I, I kind of thought maybe, but I didn't feel like I wasn't 100% sure that it was going to work. The idea would be that you make this into function notation. 10x cubed minus 39x squared plus 29x minus 6. And then what you would do is you would say, let's get rid of this stuff so I have some space right there. What you would do is you would say, well, since these are the roots of this, right, we could factor out a 10 from that if we wanted to and say that it's 10 times x minus e, x minus f, x minus g. And so if you think about it, if we want to add 2 to all of these roots, it now becomes x minus e plus 2, kind of like this, right? And so think about it, though. What, what are the roots? They're x-intercepts. So if you were to graph this cubic function, and it's going to look, you know, something like this, right? You'd have root e, root f, and root g. Well, if I just added 2 to all of those, it would be like shifting this graph 2 to the right. And since you're shifting it 2 to the right, you could then make it f of x minus 2. That will shift the graph 2 to the right. If you don't know how graph shifting and translations work, I'm not going to break it all down in this video. I could spend a half hour just explaining that topic. So um, if you plug this x minus 2 in, one way you could do that, by the way, is just dividing by 10. Um, let's get some space here and show what that would look like. If you divide by 10, you would get x cubed minus 39 over 10x squared plus 29. I don't know. Maybe it's better to leave it as is. You know, when you think about it, let's just do it as is. So you're going to have 10 times x minus 2 cubed uh, minus 39 x minus 2 squared and then plus 29 times x minus 2 and then minus 6. Now don't forget what we're looking for. We're looking for the product of these roots. Okay, so the product of these roots is going to be the negative constant over leading coefficient. So what's my leading coefficient going to be? 10 still. It's on the outside. So you're going to have 10 but there's also going to be, that's going to be 10x cubed. I'm not going to calculate all of this. I'm just going to find the constant on the end times 10. 10 times negative 8, because if you think about it, it's x minus 2, x minus 2, x minus 2. And you get the constant from this term by selecting the constant in each of these. Again, that idea of selecting something else they cover in the art of problem solving especially when you're doing, uh, I think, combinations. So uh, binomial expansion. So negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8 times 10 is negative 80. So I'm going to have other stuff, but then I'm going to have minus 80. Okay, then here I'm going to have negative 2 squared because it's x minus 2 times x minus 2. You'll have positive 4 times negative 39. Again, that's negative 156. We don't care about everything else. The linear, the, the, the quadratic term, no matter. doesn't affect us. Okay. Then 29 times negative 2 is negative 58 and negative 6. These numbers should look familiar. They are the same numbers that we had in the numerator over here. And if you add them up, you will get negative 300. 
And then don't forget, it's the negative constant. Since the constant is negative, it's negative, negative 300 over 10. You still get 30. Kind of a cool way to do it though, and it does work. And now that I think about it, it, it does make sense because all we want is the product of the roots. We don't care how high and low it goes off the X axis and how that might be affected. It won't affect the new volume. That's it for this problem. Last one for the set of 12A and we'll get on to the next problem.